just when you thought Baruch couldn't get any spicier, they've only gone and thrown in an additional augment to enhance an already overpowered setup. So whether you're a melee enthusiast, a player who enjoys a monk styled character, or looking for a Warframe to absolutely melt through Steel Path content, then you're in the right place. As always, let's go to begin with his abilities. Passive. When using any of Baruch's abilities successfully against enemies, Baruch will erode and lose his restraint and patience, building up the meter you see in the bottom right of your HUD. The more that this builds, the more damage reduction Baruch receives. Baruch's passive is also the resource that you'll be needing to spend when using his fourth ability, Serene Storm. Imagine this as a replacement for like Energy Drain, and this ability is no joke, really unleashing the hidden power inside of him. Baruch's first ability is Elude. When toggled, Baruch gains a 100% chance to dodge any incoming enemy projectiles and melee attacks, but only when he is not attacking back. This is covered as an angle surrounding the direction Baruch is facing, but this can cover him fully when modding into increased ability range. Baruch's second ability is Lull. When cast, an AoE wave of relaxation will emit from Baruch. Any enemies in line of sight or aware of Baruch's whereabouts will become lulled and put to sleep. This resets the enemy in their alerted state back to a neutral one, bringing peace back to the battlefield. Now, during their sleep, enemies are open to melee finishes. This is a good way to burst them down if you need to. Baruch's third ability is Desolate Hands. Baruch summons out a protective ring of daggers surrounding himself that provide a 10% damage reduction per dagger orbiting Baruch. When in range of an enemy, these daggers will fly out one by one from Baruch's protection to disarm those enemies if they are carrying ranged weaponry, rendering them to a melee state of attack. Now, this ability scales off his ability Strength, in which can generate you with far more than just nine daggers, but do remember that you will cap your damage reduction at 90% with this ability regardless if you have more than 9 daggers. And whilst his first ability elude is active, Desolate Hand's seeking range is doubled, giving more effectiveness in further situations. Baruch's fourth ability is Serene Storm. Now that his restraint has eroded and his patience is lost, Baruch can summon his exalted melee fist, Serene Storm. Each attack during this ability is like a ventilation, regaining his restraint back, and each attack cast emits out wind waves traveling in the direction aimed. It's so not given more of a short range styled attack, but in melee form. This is kind of similar to Excalibur's Exalted Blade. Now then, hopefully you have a good amount of base information about his kit, but to go further, we're always looking to make usage out of the helmet system. And it's to note, any melee or damage infused helmet abilities will synergize fantastically with Baruch. Some examples of those abilities are things like Rhino's Roar or Valkyr's Warcry. However, for my build, I'll be bringing in Grendel's Nourish. Not only is this a great way to help my incoming energy problems, allowing me to mod a very specific way, but when active, Nourish will also add viral procs to my attacks, making for good synergy to a DPS setup. So with this in mind, I'll be subsuming out Baruch's low ability, as I need his first ability Elude for the new augment slot, I need his third ability Desolate Hands because it gives me protection, and of course his fourth ability Serene Storm is my way of DPSing. So for this, we'll be subsuming low out of the build and replacing it. Alrighty then, Clark. Let's take a cheeky peek of that build. Absolutely, guys. And I'm just going to make one thing crystal clear before we just quickly dive into it. Baruch has so much give. He is, and always has been, a great Warframe with a great barrier to entry within Steel Path content, given not only good survivability, but also fantastic DPS. So modding him can be done in many ways. Please go and keep this in mind. Up first is Strength. Now, this is my go-to for this build, as everything within this build scales off strength. Bigger buffs, bigger damage, and better survival. Lovely stuff. Now, Duration is next in line, but I would argue that, honestly, you can mess about with however much suits you. I prefer high duration because I can apply my abilities and focus more on DPSing without the need for ability rotations as often, so it's more of a quality of life tool that I personally prefer. A range is an interesting one. For most abilities, I personally don't care about the range here, but for the angle coverage that Elude gives me when not attacking, it's really nice to have that range for. So here, I've hurt my range a little, but I couldn't justify lowering it anymore whatsoever. Now, I do need my elusive retribution augment to proc somewhat as often as it can, so we don't want to completely rid of our range. Besides from that, find the sweet spot or even keep it at 100%. And then finally, we got efficiency. Yeah? 
And as always, guys, in my videos, this is the stat that situates differently depending on where you are in a game and what you have available for you. Now, if you do go with Blind Rage like I have in this setup, please keep in mind that all of these abilities will cost you a lot of drain to use. So if you do struggle or need backup energy, please go and pop in a Prime Flow or bring an Arcane Energize. And I have tried this in multiple setups, and personally, I can get away with this format due to the Archon Shards being involved. But if you do need to go and switch things up, then please do and consider a Prime Flow. Now, I stress what I said earlier. This build has so many options available, from Archon Mod's involvement, like Archon Vitality or even Archon Continuity, to Precision Intensify to increase even more DPS to his fourth ability. The options are actually quite given, so please go ahead and try things for yourself. An Umbral Mod setup is a nice backing to help a bit of survival whilst also giving some more offense like strength but please keep in mind it's not a necessity by all means and it's quite a bit of an investment prime sure footed is good quality of life to have going in with melee will put you right into the action so having this knockdown immunity is a good addition reactive storm is an amazing augment to match any enemy hit with their weakened elemental type allowing for much easier modification to your desert wind but also easier flow to your combat and elusive retribution is baruch's new augment for each enemy attack dodged, you will gain increased melee attack speeds and melee critical damage stacking. Now do go and keep in mind, both his percentage and duration also scales off your mods. Hence why I have steered very heavily into strength and duration as my main factors, even more so because of this augment. Now as for his arcanes, again, it's really open. Any damage arcanes or melee arcanes like fury or strike work perfectly with his exalted fists. Any scaling strength like more augmented only but help you become stronger survival arcanes fit in if you are needing some backup reassurance like arcane grace arcane guardian or even like arcane reaper and of course arcanes like energize help your energy issues if you are having any now for me i actually always go and swap out the second arcane option i have here more efficiency depending on what i'm doing and facing otherwise this extra duration can be nice when casting abilities like nourish as for his Desert Wind build, it's kept quite simple. We're mostly looking for that raw damage output with big hits and plenty of oomph backed behind it. So we're mostly pairing that damage output with critical and following up with a generic elemental setup like Corrosive. Now do go and keep in mind, if you're using either of his augments, both of them are going to enhance this setup even further with adaptive status elements and increased status chance, but also with more attack speed and further critical damage. Archon shards. So if you're going to go towards the build that I have shown, then the one shard that stands out is the fill-in factor for the missing maximum energy pool. Now, whether you run two Azure Shards or five Azure Shards for maximum energy capacity is up to you. Either way, with low efficiency and low maximum energy, you'll be wanting a flow or these shards to compensate. From there, there's a few niche options with combined Archon Shards, such as feathering your melee critical damage with the Violet Shards or doing an interesting combination with the Archon Continuity mods, modding your Desert Wind for Toxin and then adding an Emerald Shard for heals on Toxin damage. It's a niche setup up but it does go ahead and work amber shards can always help with some starting energy to get your abilities cast right off the mission start this one was actually a nice quality of life to factor in otherwise guys keeping it simple crimsons fit the theme of increasing either our strength or duration further so we're going to go and pop those in and just call it a day ability rotations so for me, this is situational. It depends on how much starting energy that you have and what kind of mission type that you're in. Now, I'd recommend either by beginning with applying Nourish and getting some energy kills with weapons to build up your energy or cast your Desolate Hands for that early protection. And it doesn't really matter too much because whichever ability that you do go and choose, you should try and follow it by casting the other ability. So now that you have those up and rotating, let's help erode his restraint quicker. Pop on your elude ability, stop attacking, and face the direction in which most enemies are attacking you from. This will help lose restraint way quicker, whilst also procking and stacking your retribution augment. And when all of that is said and done, it's time to be unholy with your damage. Get your desert wings active and start mowing down enemies like they are absolutely nothing to you. It's definitely going to be a recommended Warframe that you'll hear if you don't know who to bring into Steel Path content, along with a few others, and rightfully so. So, hopefully this gives you some further insight into what he does and how he performs. And I gotta ask, if you guys have been using his new augment, what do you think about it? 
And if you could add any new augment to Baruch, what would you like to see and what would you add to him? Alrighty then, that's going to be about it from me today, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. Here's a cheeky reminder that if you did enjoy yourself, please go ahead and leave a like and a share with a friend. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. But as always, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.